know. None of these other teams have got any hope. I'm here with Craig Hope, the Daily Mail. Craig, how's the evening been for you? It's good. It's always good fun. I'm always amazed that these events sell out. There's never a spare seat in the house. I mean, what? You're the main attraction. Yeah, what surprised me more was actually the black market tickets on Highbridge before. You know, there was a queue. There was touts. Uh, yeah, so no, always good fun. Uh, it just it, it shows two things. One, you know, one it shows the, the the interest and the love in the club, but also even when the club wasn't very good, these gigs were selling out, and I think that shows the interest in us. You know, my, my instinct is to say, oh yeah, those other things will be better, they'll be stronger. George, how has the evening been for you? Sweaty. Okay. The reason George has a brand new T-shirt is because he sweated through his shirt. Yeah, that's really glamorous and attractive and sexy. Thank you. Well, you're here to give us football insight, not be sexy. No, that's true. No, it's been a brilliant night. I mean, I, I just love these events. I love True Faith, obviously. But uh, being part of these things, so to try to gauge the mood at various points of the season, but just hanging out with Newcastle fans who are all very excited and all very knowledgeable and just all very lush is just uh, a huge thrill and pleasure. You're full of love. Very interesting comments from you all. This is, this is why we do these nights and get these guys together because that is the best analysis I've heard of the casting nights. Sorry, Alex wants his paint. It's quite right. Unbelievable. For 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 me to to come to this and this is maybe the fourth or fifth one I've done with you guys since the takeover. And I was saying to one of my friends earlier, I said the one after the takeover was amazing because there was so much excitement and you could tell everyone wanted like a little piece of the action. But for you guys to still be having this, you know, two almost two years on and still have the level of interest, I mean that was almost sold out. There was only a couple of seats free in there tonight. To see the amount of people who'll come out on a lovely day like today, it was like twenty three degrees, bright sunshine, to sit in a dark hall like that and listen to A us. really hot one as well. Yeah, exactly. And to listen to us idiots talk shit and watch George sweat profusely is uh it's surprising to me, it really is, but Listen, if, 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 if they want, if they enjoy what they see and enjoy what they hear, then I'm more than happy to, to be involved in it. So I find it pretty humbling seeing the amount of people who want to listen to what we've got to say. And it's just like, it's the same situation as when you go out in town after a game or you're, you know, out walking the dog and people stop you in the street and ask. And it's so nice to, it makes you feel at home, makes you feel welcome and makes you feel part of the story. This is an open for us. These are going to be sitting this is prime interviewing time because they're clanging bottles into um, into Finn's binders. But maybe this will just pick up me. Mark, uh, how's your evening been? Sensational, yeah, brilliant, brilliant to meet the kind of the listeners and the you know fans and sort of talk about how excited we are about about the about the season. Yeah, I mean it's, it's great. It's really good. It's always good crack and. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant evenings. Uh, on the other hand, I don't feel like Sandra Tanarin when Eddie and Mad Dog when see him. They're like, you know, seventh this season but wait for the future. They're like, no, no, we are going for the top two in this division. Prediction for the season, do you think that we are going to finish first in the Premier League? I don't think that. Um, I feel bad. Should I, should I think that? Think what you like. You're an independently minded man. Thank you. I've said fifth. Um, I think that would be an absolutely exceptional season for Newcastle. Um, I said on stage, I wonder if this is a season where there's a tiny bit of consolidation. It's been such a kind of incredible, it's been such an incredible trajectory for the club so far. They're going to have to deal with the travel of Europe, with the fatigue from that, from extra games. Other clubs will be expecting them now. Um, the other side of that coin is that Newcastle are fucking class. very, very good at football, I was going to say, but yes, fucking class will also work. So I think it's going to be a very, very good season. I'm just not quite sure how to judge what that goodness means. About the coming season, obviously you've talked about it on stage, but for our viewers who maybe are yet to listen to the podcast, but they will listen to the podcast, um, what, are you, what are you looking forward to? Who's going to be your, sta actually, who's going to be your standout player this season? Well, my, my yeah, yeah. So myself and Cy before we came in here did a uh, did a, a podcast upstairs, had a beer, 
And uh, we call this the Sean Longstaff Award because 12 months ago, we sat before this very show and I said that Sean Longstaff would be the, the underrated, unsung emerging star, unsung hero, emerging star of the season. And I was right. So there you go. So it's now forever known as the Sean Longstaff Award. And this year, I've given it to Anthony Gordon. Anthony Gordon. I just think what I've seen in the summer with regards to his brilliant performance at the Euros in America, he was razor sharp. It's a cliche. He's the proverbial new sign-in. The Sean Longstaff Award goes to Anthony Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> what are you most excited about about the coming season? Champions League. Um, the trip, Away or home? The trips are going to be great, but I actually think the first game at home, the feeling around the city, you know, we're going to, everybody's going to get in about four, three, four o'clock. Those autumn nights, you know, normally we, we think of that, the long nights, the winter nights, you know, you can be bothered after to watch some Man City play somewhere. This year it's going to be Newcastle. It's going to be Newcastle. It's going to be Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Barcelona in Newcastle. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait. Like everyone else, massively looking forward to the Champions League games. Um, really looking forward to another cup run. I mean, I, I think I said downstairs during the during the show that for me the priority would be to, to get some silverware and if I had a choice between the two as a reporter, if I had a choice between the two if I was a fan I would choose a trophy because I think you can qualify for the, the top four or top five next year or the year after but I just think in my previous job in Scotland I would always go away with Rangers and Celtic and away covering the Scottish national team and I was away all the time. Rangers got to the a UEFA Cup final when I worked there I did like something like 12 trips that one year and when I moved down here to cover Newcastle I thought that was going to be the case again and I've not had that for 10 years so for me just to kind of get back into that and travel, travel in Europe and get to see different places maybe places I've been already but to get back on that European gravy train so to speak will be really fun and I'm just looking forward to getting back to St James's Park and seeing the special atmosphere again starting at the weekend yeah, it's going to be something special, especially when that, that's that first home game for the Champions League. But anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Keith. Thank you. Take care.